This is the Mind of the Meanie. Here are your hosts, the Blue Meanie and Adam Barnard. Peace world and welcome everybody to the Mind of the Meanie, your weekly peek into the world according to former WWE superstar and ECW original, the Blue Meanie. We cover wrestling, music, movies, sports, and lots and lots of useless knowledge all contained in the Mind of the Meanie. I'm your tour guide, Adam Barnard, and he is the Blue Meanie. Meanie! What's on your mind? Oh, I, was, I thought you were going to say, what's up? Uh, I was going to say, definitely not me. <laughs> oh, man, dude. Just uh, full disclosure, it's uh, 948 August 19th, Saturday, August 19th, uh, 2023. And uh, like our schedules are like kind of goofy for the next like couple weeks. Yeah. Uh, Got to get th- some things done, getting ready for... Uh, my trip to Starcast, mm. uh, end of the month, beginning, end of August, beginning of September, and got to do a bunch of shit. And uh, I didn't get sleep till late last night. And mm. laying in bed, had this like massive gas bubble in my stomach. I was like, "Oh!" Went down the hall, you know, went to the bathroom, put the foot up on the tub, just brushed <laughs> <extra> leverage. <laughs> As a uh, girl, my monsoon would say, he, he poked the tights for extra leverage. Uh, I put my foot up for the tub for extra leverage. <laughs> and uh, you know, let a couple fucking, let a couple go. Look like I, sound like I was tap dancing on fucking bubble wrap. <laughs> and uh, went back to bed and laid there for a little bit. And my thoughts, you know, we're running rampant and I couldn't fall asleep. So I, next thing you know, I'm in the perfect zone for comfort and sleep and comfort. And the fucking alarm goes off. Oh. So, so, you know, they come, you know, remind me, come do the show. And, uh, <laughs> I am ready to go right back to fucking bed. Yeah. I didn't go to bed till like two or three. Mm. So it's like, Oh, uh, now I didn't check my bed either to see, uh, track my sleep. But, uh, yeah, here we are. <laughs> face to face, a couple of silver spoons. Dude, I was, uh, I laid down. I, we watched SmackDown last night. The kids wanted to see Edge's, you know, last match, which we'll talk about in a minute. And, um, <clears throat> uh, okay, so hold on. Smart yeah. me up. Was it, it was in Toronto? Yes, it was in Toronto. And, uh, oh, okay. Shame. So I saw yeah. a lot of people talking about it. There's a lot of people, you know, saying rumors he's going to AEW mm-hmm. or whatever. But I went, no, like people are like, uh, is he, is, is he done with WWE? Is he going to AEW? I'm like, no, I, I, didn't he say he, his last match is going to be in Toronto? Mm-hmm. And then like, nobody smart me up to like that last night SmackDown was in Toronto. So I'm just like, no, he's not done yet. <laughs> so like, you just now tell me that they were, it was his last match in Toronto. Mm-hmm. Like, I hadn't been following. I saw like the, the, the the graphics for like 25 years of edge and WWE did a eight hour special, you know, with the best edge matches on YouTube and stuff like that. And I, I honestly didn't put two and two together until right now. You just said last night was in Toronto. Oh, no shit. And even I'm even more dense on my side is, uh, I went off, I was on Facebook looking at, uh, scrolling, and uh, my good friend Ron Hutchinson, who helped train Edge, had a photo say, "Oh, what a night!" And it was him, Edge, Beth, and uh, Sheamus in the photo. Mm. I still didn't put two and two together. Last night was in Toronto. I was like, maybe they should have just said, "Hey," had a sign say, "Hey, Meanie, we're in Toronto." <laughs> That's gonna be the and name of the maybe, episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then. Uh, then maybe I would have gotten the fucking hint that last night they were in Toronto. But uh, <laughs> everybody, you know, everybody's like, is he going to AEW? I was like, why? Well, Just- that, that's what I was going to say. I was going to ask you about that because, like, <clears throat> I know that's been, like, the talk of, you know, everything, by the way. If you haven't seen the match yet, uh, I know, meaning you probably have to catch up on it, too. But anybody who's listening who hasn't seen the match, it was fucking fantastic. Like, him and Sheamus put on a banger. Like, I don't even know how long it was. Um Lots of great, like, near falls and, and great action. For someone who is at his age, I mean, you know, like, he's 50. And when I say at his age, I mean, and also, like, 
the fact that he was told he would never be able to wrestle again. Yeah. And the fact that like he thought his career was done and for Mm -hmm. him to come back and do realistically three and a half years of additional wrestling and like putting on some fucking incredible matches, like we should be grateful for that. Right. But to see him do some of these spots still was like, damn, that was impressive. You know? Um, Yeah. I for me and I'll and I'll I guess I'll start this and then I'll ask you like I don't necessarily see the need or the reason for him to go to AEW other than potentially doing a final run with Christian yeah. but I don't know with the current storyline they have Christian in if that makes any sense at all you know what do you what do you think and I don't know if Christian wants to work all that much anyway right you know um no, I did that one spot in AEW like two years ago and, uh, you know, ran into Christian. I was like, Hey man, how you doing? I was like, Hey, good to see you. And he's talking about how he loves the fucking schedule. It's like the schedule is perfect for me for perfect for my body. And, uh, from the, all, in, all inclinations on, uh, my part was that, um, Christian, I don't think he, Christian wants to do much in ring anymore. So, for Edge to go to AEW, AEW. to do a Christian, or yeah, what did I say? Ed, Edge to go to AEW, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I thought I uh, thought I flubbed it. No, you're good, I man. Uh, but uh, for you know Edge to go to AEW to have a run with Christian when Christian's not even really working that much anymore doesn't make, it make sense. Well, uh, again, again, too, and I don't mean to cut you off. I was just thinking about Christian. Wasn't he also like not? cleared to wrestle because of concussions or something like wasn't there an issue with him i don't know i think that i thought that was like prior to him going to AEW Mm. because like he made that one return at the royal rumble yeah and him and edge had that moment in the uh the royal rumble right before you know christian went over to AEW. but um yeah uh i don't know i i think he might i don't know i could i i I'm sure there's somebody out there going, well, actually, <laughs> um, but, uh, I, I hope he's okay. Yeah. Um, I, I love edge of Christian. So, um, yeah, but, uh, yeah, I, I'll go rewatch. I'll go watch SmackDown. Mm-hmm. Uh, check it out. And, and you know, it's kind of perfect that Seamus was his last opponent because, Edge was working out when Edge was working out with Sheamus when he realized, like Edge and uh, Sheamus were doing this thing with uh, bikes, mm-hmm. you know, or like this uh, path and stuff like that. And Edge took a pretty nasty spill. Everybody was like, oh. and uh, Edge went, you know, I, I landed. I was like, oh, you know what? I kind of feel okay. Yeah, maybe, you know, maybe I could go back to wrestling. So it was, you know, Sheamus was the the spark that kind of made edge go, oh, well, maybe I could go back to wrestling. Yeah. So to have him be his last opponent, uh, makes a lot of sense. And, um, I don't see him going anywhere now. Cause just he's, he's been a WWE guy. Yeah. You know, you know, he's, yeah, he, you know, wrestled, he did, you know, TVs and stuff prior to edge and, you know, WCW stuff like that, but Edge Adam Cobra as Edge. It's been primarily WWE. I don't mm-hmm. see him. I don't see him. Uh, the, I think he would rather you know say you know his last match was in WWE with yeah. Sheamus. Yeah, he, going somewhere else and wrestling somewhere else would just take away from the uh, this the, the special moment that you know was his last match in Toronto. Yeah. In front of you know, in front of you know his hometown, and you know, and with the uh, you know Seamus and his wife and his his coach there by his side. Yeah, I agree. I don't. I don't know if I again, like I said, I don't know if I necessarily want to see Edge in AEW. Not that I, you know, again, it's like I don't know. I, I don't know what else they have to prove together as far as Edge and Christian is concerned. <clears throat> Excuse me. I know that uh, Christian had left. I think he signed with AEW because. From what they said that, like, oh, we don't have any, like, no creative for you or nothing that we can do right now. And I don't know if that was pandemic related or what, but um, no, I don't know, man. I don't know if I want to see it. And I feel like it was a good, like, when you watch it and you watch the way kind of everything ends and, like, the way that the show went, it was, and then after the show was over, 
he was like, I think he's like, I know I definitely don't have another year in me. Um, and I think, you know, this could be it. Um, and he, asked, he said, he was like, I got to talk to my family and see what I want to do and do this. But like, I don't know, man, I feel like at a certain point, like, and, and again, maybe that's true for a lot of, a lot of guys in the ring. Like you have to kind of know when it's, when an, enough is enough, you know? And, and especially because of the fact, like I said, even Sting, Sting's in that same category. Like imagine being told that you, if you wrestle again, you could never walk or die, you know? Yeah. And then, um, now being having an entirely new lease on your career and you know he run won the royal rumble he uh main evented wrestlemania you know he had started the the, the judgment day like he had that great feud with orton and, and there were so many things that he, we got to see over this course of time here and it was like i don't know i just i i guess for me it's like okay this feels like a really good way for him to tie it up and if that's the end of it then then that's that so yeah, it's definitely the perfect bow on it and uh he said he's 50. He's so he's, he's basically 49, yeah. 49. You know, we're basically the same age. I f- feel every bit of that comment, you know, and you know, I appreciate fans going, Oh, when you, you know, you still wrestle. I'm like, yeah, still doing stuff, you know, here and there, you know, like I like to be the surprise. I like to do the run in. I like to do the battle Royal. Uh, you know, could I go 15 minutes? Maybe, mm-hmm. but it'll take me like three or four days for my body to fucking heal mm. because I don't, have, I don't have that callus build up like I, I used to, you right. know, when you're, you know, you're wrestling like I was and you're wrestling, you know, three or four days a week, your body builds up that tolerance to where, you know, you know, it gets used to, you know, the, the falls and Something as simple, sitting the fucking ropes. Yeah, you know, holy shit. You know, just um, I do what I I know I can get away with, you know, physically, and uh, not have to fucking, you know, uh, pay the uh, pay the what's the, uh, what would be the term to uh, suffer the consequences. Mm, yeah. Of, uh, you know, my body not being that used to it anymore. So, you know, it's fun, uh, you know, but, uh, yeah, edge, you know, saying he doesn't have another year in him. I, I do not fucking blame him. Yeah. You know, maybe other than a, a random rumble appearance here and there, but still, I think he would want to keep that storybook ending that bow on the, on the, uh, the career, by ending it in, in Toronto. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And it's, it's what else is cool for me is like growing up as a, as a kid in the attitude era, you know, and, and watching. And then even after that, as edge started to like take that trajectory up and, you know, enjoying so much of his work as a young person and now getting to experience that again with my kid, like, you know, James is a big edge guy. He loves watching edge. And it's just funny. It's like, I never would have thought that like, you know, in 2021, we'd still be watching like, watching edge wrestle at such a high level, you know, main eventing WrestleMania. Like it's just, it's, it was really cool. Um, ba- Andrew Bailey here. Shackleford says, I would definitely want to see edge and Christian again. That would rule. I mean, yeah, like I, I, I don't know if I necessarily have any like hesitation towards seeing them again, because I think the two of them are hilarious, but I also don't know if like it, he, it needs to be in like a wrestling ring you know like maybe they could do a spot backstage you know or maybe they could do a spot with something else but I don't necessarily know if I want to watch them in ring again because I feel like I don't know I feel like like Meanie said I feel like it's the it's the perfect way to tie that up and and be done so dude I loved when they were doing the ENC show on the net on the network yeah man that's you know if they can still be creative and do something like that or go back to their their podcast or whatever you know, and uh, there's different ways to have creative outlets. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you want to see Edge and Christian. And if he goes to AEW, it can't be Edge. Right. So it's, it's you know, Chris, Christian can get away with being Christian Cage because he was Christian Cage before he was in WWE. Right. But he What's he going to do? Go back to, go back to Sexton Hardcastle? You know, just. <laughs> yeah, he can't use the name. You know, uh, Sexton Hardcastle and all the diehard WWE fans are going, what? (laughs) 
Who the hell is that? Excuse me? Uh, you know, because you can't assume that, like, every casual WWE fans. I mean, I'm sure they kind of would know if they've watched, you know, the Edge documentary. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which was excellent, by the way. Like, I mean, this came out a few years ago, but which now that you've, you know, I mentioned it, they should probably like do a updated version, mm-hmm. you know, on edge. But, uh, yeah, he would have the, he couldn't be edge in AEW. So that, that might be a little bit awkward. Yeah. So especially if you want to, if you're trying to get the uh, casual fans. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, and that's when you know you're doing good is when you get the casuals. So. Yeah, uh, it would be nice to see him, but in the ring, eh, not so much in the ring. Yeah. One of the things I did want to mention and bring up here is uh, I started doing reels recently, Meanie. And nice. uh, I, I learned Muscle Man Malcolm, friend of the show, uh, taught me nice. how to do the uh, the reels and, and the different programs while we were in Detroit. And uh, it really, like, helped my social media game. And I was like, well, we should start doing this with Mind of the Meanie as well. And I put yeah. together something from last week when we were talking about Van Halen. And nice. um, it got a lot of traction, and a lot of people really dug it. And also, yeah. um, and I'll let you talk a little bit about this, uh, we had a great retweet and a great share from that from that post on Twitter. Yeah, uh, you did the uh, reel on, uh, I was talking about Van Halen in the last episode, and the great Greg Renoff, uh, author of the book Van Halen Rising, uh, which you know co- pretty much covers Van Halen's childhood up until they get signed. You know, the, the club days, the the backyard parties, the Van Halen used to play all the time, and uh, yeah, it's a great read if you ever get a chance to uh, read it. He did that, and he did a book on the uh, Ted Templeman, mm. who was legendary producer, produced Van Halen, the Doobie Brothers, but um. Yeah, Greg uh, retweeted us and uh, said, you know, we made a good point. And uh, also, like, if you're a Van Halen junkie like myself, uh, you know, there's a couple books. You know, there's a there's Van Halen Rising by Greg Reinoff. And uh, if, if I was going to put them in chronological order or which to read, it would be start off with Van Halen Rising by Greg Reinoff. Then get Running with the Devil by Noel Monk. Mm-hmm. Noel Monk was Van Halen's tour manager, and then he became their manager manager. Uh, if you could find David Lee Roth's Crazy from the Heat book, get that. Uh, it's hard to find anymore. Uh, get the Sammy Hagar book, which is pretty good. Uh, and uh, there was one more I'm not, that's escaping me, but uh, you know, there's a couple books that came out. Uh, oh, there's a... Yeah. I can't think of the name, but, uh, oh, I think it was, un- it's called, uh, Unchained. Mm. And it's a, it's a bunch of, it's a ser- a collection of interviews Eddie did. And in that book, a lot of the stuff that's talked about in other books comes up, you know, oh. which is kind of cool. You know, they hear, uh, hear stories about, you know, you read, you know, you know, one story in Greg Reynolds book, you read another story, in Noel Monk's book. And then uh, somehow, you know, while Eddie's you know, being interviewed, I, I wish I could remember the author. Uh, it's Unchained. It was a bunch of Ed, Eddie Van Halen interviews. And he brings up some stuff that's like, you know, is brought up. At, uh, oh, also, yeah, okay. Read Running with the Devil. Read the Sammy book. Read the Ted Templeman book because there's a lot of Van Halen stories in the Ted Templeman book. And uh, a lot of those stories get talked to about by Eddie in yeah. uh, the interview book. I will tell but you, it, not to jump in, but it, Unchained, the Eddie Van Halen story was written by Paul Brannigan. This one right okay. there, right? Yep. Yeah, so that, yeah, yeah. That's the one you want to check out. Yeah, a bunch of, yeah, there's a bunch of interviews and stuff like that in chronological order. And, um, yeah, like one story, for instance, um, um, during the recording in 1984, uh, they were having a little bit of writer's block on the song, I'll Wait. So Ted Templeman reached out to uh, Michael McDonald from the Doobie Brothers. And Michael McDonald and helped David Lee Roth write some lyrics for I'll Wait. 
So 1984 comes out and Michael McDonald is nowhere in the writing credits. No shit. Yeah. So like this became like a, a fucking thing. And, uh, you know, there's a, there's a moment in, uh, Ted Tumbleman's book where he's like, he's with Michael McDonald somewhere, this, uh, media, this industry thing. And Eddie Van Halen walks in goes around and go, Hey, blah, 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 blah. you know, you know, Hey, good to see you. Blah, blah. And they were like, you know, Ted was like, you know, shocked that Eddie didn't like go and say, Hey, uh, you know, thanks for the, or uh, Eddie didn't say anything about Michael McDonald not being put in the credits wow. or, or any reason why, or this, that, and the other thing. But, um, if you read it, you know, the, the interview book with uh, the interview book with uh, Eddie, Eddie talks about it. He's like, yeah, we got a suit by Michael McDonald because, you know, uh, you know, <laughs> because Ted Templeman, uh, you know, listened to some of, you know, Michael McDonald's suggestions and he had a tape recorder under his desk and recorded the whole thing. And they went and took the song ideas and put it on the album. And I didn't even know about it, this, that, and the other thing. So, it's like kind of oh cool to hear one person's perspective. And then, you know, after you read the book, you just happen to listen to a book and you hear Eddie talking about his perspective on that and stuff wow. like that. You know, Ted Templeman, you know, was re- recording Mike, you know, had a tape recorder or something like that, whether it's true or not. Right. Right. Who knows? But like, you know, it's always, it always puts into perspective that, you know, every book and every podcast, everything comes from one person's perspective. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying Ted Templeman is d- dishonest either, but it, it's fascinating. It, like I, w- I was driving somewhere and I had the audio book on and when he started talking about it, I went, holy shit. All right. <laughs> well, there's the other side. Yep. You know, oh, it's crazy, man. I had no idea. But, yeah. But uh, yeah, shout out to Greg Renoff who uh, retweeted our um, our reel yep. and uh, added some extra commentary and it, it was it was a good it was a good conversation we had last week. You know, yeah. as far as you know, you know, because I said you know who else would I have seen? Who else would ha- would I have liked to seen sing very in hand? I said Sebastian Bach, mm. and uh, I got a lot of positive uh, response, which was really cool. Yeah, and the and in this day of internet, you know? Yeah, it was cool, man. And, and, uh, it was, again, it's, it's learning how to use these new fangled contraptions on, uh, on the old social media and the telephone has been nice. So I'm, uh, I'm excited to, to start sharing more of these things and, and, and allowing people to see us do this. You can also, as a note, watch us do this live, like as in right now on yeah. patreon.com slash mind of the meaning tears starting, not tears from your eyes, folks, but tears that you can join starting at just $10 a month. Uh, and there won't be any tears in your eyes when you watch this because maybe tears of laughter, but no yeah. no sadness. So uh, I will say that I have used your statement, bozy, bozy, bop the fuck on out of here. I used that at work at least three times this week. So I just want to <laughs> let you know, thank you very much for that. I appreciate you doing that. I, I, I had quite the heated uh, interaction with uh, Simon Diamond. Really? Because uh, he's a diehard Van Halen fan. He, He's, he's diehard Dave era. I'm like, well, he's like, it was such an attitude during the Dave era. It, it was the best. I was like, yeah, and then he fucking quit. <laughs> he took his ball and went home. He, and that's where I, that's where the fucking line, he bozy, bozy bopped his way out of the fucking band, and which got a good pop. <laughs> uh, we were uh, backstage of Smashing Pumpkins. And, uh, you know, I'm sure Billy, I uh, was, he's like, Oh, great. Brian's bringing up fucking Van Halen again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, cause I, you know, I, I, I'm an Eddie head. Yay. And then, you know, Simon Diamond, AKA Pat Kenny was there and he's like, you know, Oh yeah. But the Dave hour was so good. It was all about an attitude. I was like, yeah, then he fucking quit. He abandoned you. <laughs> so why are you singing this? Why are you singing the praises of a man who left you yeah. and you know ended that era? You know, 
But you know, to be fair, like if had if Dave, if Dave had stayed in that fucking band, the band just would have just disbanded altogether. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. If you go and get Noel Monk's book, you can you know hear about all the fracturing that just started happening around the Diver Down album through through 1984. Yeah. And there's no way those those personalities could have continued. You know, it's you know. Uh, you know, it's it's a miracle that you know they stayed together and and got Sammy and had a an, another ten year run. Yeah, and them, you know, considering how fractured things were in the Van Halen camp, you know, when Dave was still in the band. So it's, about, it's, it's, it's for the it, best, man. Yeah, but you know, I'm an Eddie guy. You know, to me, he's the best guitar player in the world. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, that's just my opinion. Okay. A fact. You know, but, uh, you know, if, uh, you know, getting to, to, to talk about Van Halen and having the, the, the cool interactions we had online this past week was yeah. pretty cool. It was cool, man. It was fun. Um, and again, like I, I loved getting the chance to talk music with you because it, it just adds a, a whole different element to the show. So uh, I always enjoy, I think we may have talked about this. You bring up Michael McDonald, but I think I mentioned about, um, before Michael McDonald, uh, having Michael Jackson sing backup on what a fool believes. And that was like a big rumor apparently back in the day. So I, I'm a big Michael McDonald fan. Um, so I, I'm always interested to hear stories about it, but I had no idea that he wrote or, you know, what ended up happening with the lawsuit? Did they give him writing credits? Yeah. He, he eventually got credits on future albums and I don't know. I, I forget, I forget what happened monetarily, hmm. but uh, yeah, he, eventually he got put in the, in the writing credits for I'll uh, wait. Yeah. Which I'm, is, it blows, it blows my mind that Michael McDonald worked with Van Halen, you right, know? Right. It's like this weird fucking, like, it just, the, their musical styles don't don't mesh at all. And here he's helping David Lee Roth write, write lyrics. It's crazy. And then, you know, it's like, uh, you know, Michael McDonald's, you know, the staple of fucking Yacht Rock. Yeah, dude. Yeah, like, man. Like, I, I had always thought I heard him in Steely Dan songs, but he was, and Steely Dan, he, mm-hmm. it's so much, him and uh, Kenny Loggins, yeah, were together. Were, were, you know, worked together a lot. Like, uh, I was it. Uh, I was just listening to Kenny Loggins on the the Fly on the Wall podcast, which is David Spade and um, oh yeah, who the fuck is it? Who plays Garth in Wayne's World? Oh, uh, Dana Carvey. Dana Carvey, David, David Spade, they have a, it's, it's like a heavy on Saturday Night Live type podcast. Oh. They had Kenny Loggins on. And, uh, yeah, he wrote What a Fool Believes with uh, Michael McDonald. Like, he was walking up to Michael McDonald's house, and he heard Michael McDonald just, like, putzing around, the, you know, on the piano singing parts of what would go on to become What a Fool Believes, and walks into the room and goes, hey, I got an idea for that part. Uh Wow. It became, it became this like huge fucking song. So wow. Yeah, I think What a Fool Believes is really like their I think it's the Doobie's biggest hit, if I recall correctly. Yeah, they won so many they won a ton of Grammys. Yeah. Stuff like that. That it, minute by that, that minute by minute record is fucking fabulous though, man. I still have it on vinyl yeah. downstairs. We spin that at least once a month. Yeah. Another yacht rock staple. Yes. Uh, unapologetically unapologetically a yacht rock fan here pal i'm not even gonna front <laughs> love that shit love dude, it dude. Anytime, anytime fucking have you have a shit day uh-huh it's like fuck let me put on some fucking yacht rock you get a couple beers in me man i'll do my michael mcdonald impression for you <laughs> it keeps you burning man <laughs> do you remember when Will? Do you remember when Will Sasso did the Biff the bathtub video with the fucking goatee as Michael McDonald? No, but oh, I, I will now. It got buffed up. <laughs> I gotta pull it well, up, man. I watched the Dudesy podcast with him and Ted Coleman, and every now and then he'll bust into a random Michael McDonald, which. Always pops me. You, but, have, uh, you have to. Like, any chance you get to do a Michael McDonald impression, man, is fucking, it's way worth it. <laughs> my, probably my, 
<laughs> Probably my favorite Will Sasso Mad TV fucking skit was uh, on Mad TV. And he's Ke- he's Kenny Rogers. Oh, man. <laughs> and, uh, doing like a duet with Marilyn Manson. Oh, my God. And then like Marilyn Manson like goes down like out of camera frame. <laughs> And the insinuation is Marilyn Manson's flating Kenny Rogers. <laughs> and then Marilyn Manson comes back up to his feet. Kenny Rogers goes, I didn't say stop. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. Oh my God. Listen, I would love to, we would, I'd love to chat, chat it up with Will Sasso. So anytime, if, Will, Will, if you're listening, which I know you are a uh, friend of the show, Will Sasso, you got an open invitation, brother. Whenever you want to come and chop it up with us, brother. I actually got. Uh, a- dude, I, I've loved Will Sasso. I love him on Doozy. I loved him in the Ten Minute Podcast. <laughs> uh, I was fortunate enough that he worked me into a couple skits on the Ten Minute Podcast. Oh, that's so that's so cool, man. I think either while he was doing Jesse Ventura or Donald Trump or something like that. <laughs> so, Brian Heffron, you know, or something <laughs> like that. I forget. I forget the the the. the context of the impersonation of why he brought my name up but uh we have me, me and uh will have a mutual friend tommy blotcher who used to write for wwe mm. and tommy was on that podcast and uh i'm i'm, I'm sure that was the inspiration but uh tommy bought you know shout out to tommy blotch he's he's another creative guy you know, yeah, worked on Conan o'brien wwe uh he did that cartoon metal I can't even pronounce it. Metal Apocalypse or something. Oh, like metal, that. yeah, Metalopolis or Metalopolis. Yeah, listen, whatever the fuck. Yeah, you know what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah. But uh, shout out to him too. I uh, good dude. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. dude. I'm great to have Will on here. Um, I was talking to Chris Van Vliet in uh, Detroit when we were there at SummerSlam, and I was asking him like. I was like, dude, how crazy is that? That like the the Jesse Ventura impression thing blew up, and he was like, man, the craziest part is that like Jesse responded. Like Jesse yeah. tweeted about it, and it was just like I was like, "Did that blow your mind? Like, could you did like did you ever think about that?" And he was like, "Dude, he's like, I didn't even really know how to respond at first. Like, here's Jesse Ventura responding to stuff that we're doing, and you know, both of these things are involved." With- <laughs> there are times where I just walk around in my day to day life and I think about things in Will Sasso's impression of Jesse Ventura. Like, it's just so yeah. fucking good, man. I would love to do a fucking Ventura Trump mash off between. Will and, and I doing, you know, these impressions for at least three hours. Like, I think we could keep it up for that long. Jesse, the body Ventura. <laughs> Got a pack of dogs. <laughs> you tell me. What did they get the plutonium? <laughs> now, I like the lemonade instead of the... Shut up, monsoon. <laughs> oh my God, dude. It's so good. I could listen to him fucking do it all day. Listen here, McMahon. Uh, I can't do it <laughs> We'll call, uh, we'll call, here's what we'll do is this will be the official, uh, you know, um, event status here. We'll have care friend of the show, Karrion Cross on and friend of the show, Will Sasso. And we'll moderate between the two of them, uh, as Jesse Ventura <laughs> for at least six hours. It'll be a whole live event. We'll pay, we'll have people pay money to come on and donate it to something. But, uh, no, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, I always, like I said, love chatting music with you. Um, what else is going on, man? What else is going on in the mind of the meanie? Oh man, just. This- Got a lot of things going on. Uh, you know, doing stuff with the UPW event, uh, mm. video game. You know, uh, there's stuff I, I really want to talk about, but there's like it's a lot of stuff I know that hasn't been announced. So it's like I don't want to be uh, butterfingers, <laughs> butter. I want to be butterlips McGee over here <laughs> and <laughs> secrets all over the place. Uh, that's been going on. Uh, just got to buy, and, and, and I'm, things are really just ramping up for uh, Starcast in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, and just doing the, um, doing the podcast and stuff like that. So, so, uh, I wish I had more exciting things to talk about. Um, I was going to say, I saw it. Starcast. Dennis Rodman is going to be there. Yeah. That's Boy, crazy. Funny thing about that is, you know, before I, I was the blue meanie, you know, pitched the idea of blue meanie and having blue hair. I was thinking of dyeing my hair blue. And that was because at the time Dennis Rodman was in the NBA and he was doing all the crazy hair colors and yeah. stuff like that. You know, I was, you know, I was 20, 21. I was like, 
I didn't know. I knew how to wash my hair, but I didn't know how to fucking dye my hair. How do you make your hair blue? You yeah. know, and then people are like, oh yeah, use Kool-Aid, use this, use that. And it's like, I don't know how to do any of that fucking shit. Yeah. And then when it came time to do the blue meaning, I was just like, uh, I guess I just pour this shit in my hair and it stays right. <laughs> and it would, and of course it would wash out, you know, mm-hmm. Started off with manic panic, which I guess is like the OG of hair colors, but it really didn't last long. And, it, you know, eventually your hair fades to green. Yeah. Uh, you know, you really have to fucking keep up on that shit. And, uh, but then, yeah, the, the whole thought of dyeing my hair came from Dennis Rodman doing all the, the, the crazy colors while he was, he was playing basketball. Oh, it's crazy, man. Uh, it'd be cool to, to see him there, you know. I was supposed to do that fucking uh, show in Australia. Oh, uh, right. Uh, he was on, and uh, that got fucking botched somehow. Oh, jeez. Uh, and uh, that would have been cool to say I was on a wrestling show with Dennis Rodman. Yeah. But, uh, I, I actually, I get to say it now. Now, because it's Starcast, because you know, he'll be there. But, um, yeah, I'll be, I'll be, be super dope, man. Cool. I hope yeah, it'd be a cool. Opportunity. I'd love to see a. I'd love to see a a, a Rodzilla Bluezilla photo of the two of you together. Uh, so that'll be that'll. that'll I, listen, I'm just giving out free captions for you here, so you can do with that what you want, sir. I'm definitely uh, plotting my way <laughs> to make my way over to see uh, Dennis Rodman. Yeah, I'm not. I like doing conventions anyway. Yeah, yeah. it's like I do like high school reunions and shit like that. So, you know, but uh. Yeah, I'll definitely be working my way over to uh, to Rodman's. There's a lot of there's a lot of really great people that are going to be there. Besides the Blue Meanie and Rodzilla, uh, lots of great talent. Looks like John Moxley is going to be there. Nick Gage, Orange Cassidy, Rob Van Dam, friend of the show. Uh, Scott Steiner is going to be there. Uh, lots of great stuff, and it's also streaming right now, or it's going to be streaming exclusively on the Premier Streaming Network. Uh, so it's September first to the third. Uh, so tickets are still available. So I'm excited to see, uh, find out more information about UPW. And uh, I'm excited to just see Rodman. Like, I'm, uh, you know, it's crazy to me to think about the fact that, like, Rodman was one of the best basketball players of his era, but that he is most known for being a part of the NWO. You know, <laughs> like, it's just like, it's wild, right? He was doing this all while he was in the playoffs. Yeah. Like him and Carmelo were playing each other in the playoffs and wrestling in WCW at the same time. It's unbelievable. Yeah. It's unbelievable. I mean, say what you want about WCW, but like they were in the mainstream, like, like legit, like they were on the tonight show and the NBA. I mean, they're they're, they're, like WWE wasn't doing that at the time. They weren't, you know, that's, I mean, that, that's crazy. Crazy. The stories from that time too, about Rodman are just wild like i can't yeah. even imagine being in that in that entourage at the time yeah billy corgan's got a good story about how uh the coach of the uh bulls kind of blamed him for like one of the trips to vegas or whatever he's like dude i didn't take him to vegas he took me to vegas <laughs> it's that, that kind of thing where like they went back to uh the playoffs and oh man i can't think of the guy's name uh but he, he was just getting you know, giving billy the eye like how dare you take my player to Vegas? It's like, no, 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 no. He took me. <laughs> <laughs> you talk about Phil Jackson. Phil Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I don't want to, you know, fuck a Billy story. I'm sure he can, uh, I'm sure he's told it, <laughs> but um, yeah, he, you know, he was, you know, cause Billy's from Chicago. So he's, he's diehard Chicago. Like I'm diehard Philly. Yeah. And then, you know, it, you know, shout out to Billy Corgan. Like when uh, the Eagles went to the Super Bowl, he, you know, you know, sent me a good luck wish. Oh, nice! Which is because kind of cool he knows how diehard I am with Philly. The same way, uh, I know he's diehard with Chicago sports and stuff okay. like that. So that's awesome. But uh, yeah, during that whole era of that that Bulls era, he was like kind of like there. Yeah, I forget. I was it on. Uh, I think he might have said, said it on. Uh, I forget which podcast he was on. I don't want to say, I know he was recently on Chris Van Vliet, mm. but uh, I don't know if, I don't want to misappropriate the fucking 
reference, but he uh, talked about like he was there during that whole Bulls run, and like he had, he had to step out of the locker room just to you know catch his bearings because he's like it was pure craziness. So he walked over to this part of the gym where there's you know, thinking he's going to be alone. He walks in and there and there's fucking Michael Jordan. Yeah. Wow. Just sitting by himself, like collecting his fucking thoughts. And they kind of looked at each other and like nodded like, cool, cool. And then like Billy just went over to sit where he was sitting and Jordan just sat there where he was sitting and they weren't saying anything. And then all of a sudden the press comes in and mobs Jordan. Wow. And he's like, I mean, it was kind of cool to just sit in a room with, with Jordan as he was just sit. You could see it sitting there. You could see he was sitting there collecting his thoughts and replaying everything in his mind. And he just wanted that one moment of just quiet. Yeah. To reflect and then the fucking press comes in and blah 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 blah. Mm. I but, think I, re- you know, I remember seeing that story on social media floating around a little bit ago when Billy talked yeah, about that. So yeah, it, it's definitely uh on somebody's reels. Mm-hmm. Uh I'm sure you can Google you know Billy Corgan, Michael Jordan. Well when you find our reels, you can find that one too, my friends. You can check that out as well. Uh going into the pod squad chat group here before we get into the next segment yeah. of the show, Vanessa is here. Uh, Vanessa says, have you ever seen the video of Jesse Ventura interviewing Donald Trump at WrestleMania? No, but I need to see it now. I'm, I'm sure I did. I just probably don't remember it. Well, that too. Yeah. Which WrestleMania was it? Uh, he was at a couple, wasn't he? Trump. He was at, uh, well, they well, did it yeah. at Trump Plaza at WrestleMania four, right? He hosted four and five. That's it. At Trump Plaza. The one which is how I kind of, you know, my grandfather worked there security. That's how I got into those fan fests That's as a crazy. kid. And, uh, yeah, I was, I was magical. Yeah. You know, I was talking to somebody about, about that, you know, like how, you know, cause Manny is coming to Philly mm-hmm. and, uh, a couple of my friends got tickets, you know, uh, Oh, uh, Doug from McCusker's Dougie McCusker got, uh, some tickets and we're talking, I was talking about, it. I was like, it's so crazy. You know, you know, uh, WrestleMania, the first three WrestleManias, I would go to see them on closed circuit TV. You know, they, I, we went to a resorts casino in Atlantic City, me and my grandfather. We saw WrestleMania 1, 2, and 3. It was magical. You know, just, you know, especially the first one because, like, you're up late, you're nervous, you're being a geek, you're being a fanboy. You know, you see Hulk and Mr. T on Saturday Night Live the night before. You wake up early. And this is, like, back when WrestleMania was, like, maybe 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. Like, the, the early ones are, like, 1 in the afternoon. And, you know, you, have, you get up early on a Sunday morning, you walk down the boardwalk, it's a beautiful day, you hear the seagulls, and you go into the casino, and people are waiting in line like they're actually going into a, an event, like, mm. as if WrestleMania was there. Yeah. Because they had, like, merchandise booths, they had the uh, things where you could buy the programs, the t-shirts, the posters, all right there. Yeah. And it's like, holy shit. So we watched one, two, and three there, and then four and five came to Atlantic City. Yeah. It really wasn't until WrestleMania six is when I actually watched WrestleMania in my house, Mm -hmm. you know, like I would watch it on, on videotape, but never live. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is still the early days of, uh, you know, pay-per-view and, uh, you know, it it was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. WrestleMania six was probably the first WrestleMania I saw live, you know, -hmm. know, I got to watch live in my house. Yeah. You know, not like in your house, but in my house. <laughs> I can't remember. I think it was probably, what year was WrestleMania 6? That was Hogan and, and Warrior, right? Yeah. That was probably what was, it was like 91, I guess? 90 or 91, I think? Um, I'm, well, it could, have been, it could have been. I'm pretty sure that was the was, uh, WrestleMania 1 was like 85, right? Yeah, so it's probably, if it was 6, so you're probably looking at like 91. Because I was born in 85, so yeah, I was, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I think, sorry, man, I'm old, or I I made you feel old, I apologize, Um, I, uh, I remember, I think that was the first one we watched live, too, I think that was the first, because we, again, we had Clyde's video store down the road, and they always had the wrestling tapes, and we started from, you know, WrestleMania 1 on, and, um, yeah, I think 6 was the first one I watched live, because I remember being crushed that Hogan lost. And dude, like uh, WrestleMania six, like I actually cried when Warrior won. Really? Yeah, it was that like 
it was such a perfect build to it. It was, you know, the promos, the lead ups, you know, you know, they, how they were facing off in the rumble and then there were, you know, tagging and then there's like this animosity while they were tagging and it became a thing where they challenged for, you know, WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. Like, oh my God. They both had belts. They're both good guys. I like both, but who do I like more? You know, and Warriors to, the new thing. And, you know, when he won, I, I have no, you know, shame in the men. I, I kind of cried when he won because it just the spectacle of it, you know, yeah. you weren't, you weren't expecting it. You weren't, you weren't expecting a clean finish. Right. Yeah. You know, you know, at that time, you know, I've still a, a smart Mark, but, uh, Brother. you know, I still have my ways of, you know, you know, being invested yeah. Yeah, I was invested in when I saw that clean one, two, three and this the celebration afterwards and Hogan going out and getting the belt and oh my god, what is he gonna do with the belt? And then he gives him the belt, raises his hand, hugs, and you see him riding off in the sunset on the uh the ring cart. Yeah. And you know, so you know, warrior just celebrating and then it goes off the air and then you have no internet yep. or nothing like that. You just gotta wait until the next tape comes out or whatever it is, yeah. And that, yeah, the way superstars. Yeah, yeah, the way. Yeah, the next Saturday morning show. Yeah, you know, there was no. I mean, fans don't know how good they fucking have it, dude. Now. What a time! I remember that. Yeah, I remember being like, "Fuck, we got to wait till Saturday now to watch what yeah. happens next." I'll tell you, yeah. my my kids cried um, when Cody lost at WrestleMania this year. They were beside themselves i mean and again like it's but again it's like hogan and warrior right the way they set it up it was like this perfectly executed like that was the reaction they wanted to elicit from people was like fuck he lost are you serious after all of that after the entire build-up and everything he loses um yeah no dude i mean just then now like it's just a it's a great time to be a wrestling fan have Um, you seen the Cody documentary oh my god dude so good yeah, so good, man. The fucking right. the one on uh, Peacock was fantastic. Yeah, it was unbelievable. Yeah, I really I I learned a lot. Um, and uh, I appreciated that they didn't shy away from the AEW stuff because I feel like right. I feel like sometimes I mean a lot of times it feels like WWE tends to ignore a lot of the things that happen outside of their universe, you know. And I feel yeah. like the, I feel like the story or Cody's story would have been disingenuous portrayed that way if they hadn't have mentioned it like obviously they can't use footage and shit right but like right. this is a huge part of who he is and why he's back here you can't just ignore that you know um so no i, I thought it was great what did you think it, well it was kind of cool that like the young bucks were in the, in the credits yeah for the doc because i guess they let them use the being the elite footage mm-hmm. you know they, they they licensed that footage which is kind of cool I thought the doc was great. It was a, a perfect uh, companion piece to the, you know, Dusty Rhodes A and E biography that came out, and uh, I thought it was well done. Yeah, uh, just uh, it was, and it was cool to, you know, like you said, they mentioned AEW stuff like that, but you know, and everything leading up to the Mania match, which he didn't win, which to me, in a lot of way, in a lot of ways, was like their Rocky finish. Yes. You know, uh, Rocky didn't win the first fight. And I am And there's sticking, a second one in Philadelphia. I'm just saying. I'm sticking to my 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 prediction that they'll have the rematch in Philly and Cody will win the belt in Philly. Yep. Because uh Cody went on Rich Eyes and said how much he loves Philadelphia. Because there's a moment where, like, he didn't think he was doing well, and the crowd, you know, Philly gave him such a great reaction that, you know, he's always had a, a soft spot in his heart for uh, Philadelphia. And Philly loves, he loved his dad. And yeah, we, we uh, recognize, you know, history. Yep. And, uh, you know, that's probably our way of tipping our hat to him saying, you know, we love your family. You know, there's your family, as Tracy Smothers would say. Um, there's your family, man. Um, but yeah, yeah, it was cool. Yeah, I, I, I definitely think, you know, the, the sequel will be in Philadelphia WrestleMania 40. Mm-hmm. 
James and I got tickets to uh, WrestleMania this year as well. We got, we're going to night two, which I feel like is always going to be the big main event. So hopefully, sir, I will see you there because we're making a whole fucking weekend out of it. And nice. uh, I'm hoping that I will be part of the media scrums as well or whatever. They, you're not supposed to call it a scrum. Sorry. A press conference uh, and right. some of the stuff that's going on. But I'm, I, again, man, like as we're getting booted up for this and like it's it's coming it's less than a year away like uh, i think i'm taking the whole week off so i can just go and do stuff you know what i mean like it just go and experience uh that time um so uh no i'm excited man i'm i uh i i love the doc and i i really i genuinely think that this is the build where it's gonna happen right like rocky too i feel like that's really where we're going with this but well you you figure after SummerSlam, i I mean the timing for the documentary can be more perfect because you know, they kind of go to, in the teasing for WrestleMania mode after SummerSlam where, you know, okay, SummerSlam's done. Let's re- release the documentary. Yeah. To bring people back up to speed on the fact that, yeah, I rep Mania, he didn't win the belt. So now that when they have this build and then once they hit, you know, get to January and, you know, Royal Rumble and they hit, they'll, that's when they'll start, you know, revving it up even further. But there'll still be hints here and there. For uh, you know, Cody not you know not getting the belt, yeah, and uh, you know going on to uh, WrestleMania forty. Mm-hmm. It's uh, it's going to be an amazing build. I'm really looking forward to it. And um, you know, th- again, this is this is where the exciting times start for wrestling again. Like as like around the fall after Survivor Series, I feel like that's when they're really going to like throw it in the high gear. But... Mimi, what attention, sir? And fantasy yep. football fanatics, as the draft season approaches, don't neglect the most important draft pick of all, your game balls. We all know how injuries can ruin a season, so let Manscaped take care of that Reggie Bush of yours with their skin-safe technology. They should guarantee you have a smooth ride into the playoffs. The leader, the leaders rather, in the below-the-waist grooming have created a championship lineup with a performance package 4.0, and it's time for you to do the same. Join the 9 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped Get ready for kickoff by going to manscaped.com right now for 20% off plus free shipping with the promo code Mind Meanie and Meanie. I understand that uh, being in wrestling, sometimes you take a shot below the belt there, uh, uh, or and even too while you're trimming, sometimes you can hurt uh, little John on the east side, boys. How has Manscaped held your confidence down there while shaving? Well, I love the performance package 4.0 and, and the lawnmower trimmer 4.0, the 4.0 trimmer. But I'm a big fan of the weed whacker because, you know, it's a fantasy football season, which leads to re- real football. And when I go to go uh, tailgate at an Eagles game, I want to make sure my nose and ear hairs are nice and trimmed because I don't want to look like I'm holding a pair of pom poms like I'm a cheerleader or something. Else. So, but Man- Manscaped's got me looking great this football season. They got us both cleaned up, and you also want to make sure that your other tailgate looks good by using their Performance Package 4.0 because inside of there, you'll find the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, the Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver Toner, Performance Boxer Briefs, meaning, and a travel bag to carry all that stuff with you. Slot, nice. It's amazing, right? Slotted at quarterback, we have the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, the spaceship is here to guide you on a journey to trim your balls, your body, and even your A gap. This fourth-generation trimmer also features a cutting-edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin-safe technology with their 7,000 RPM motor and multifunction on and off switch that you can engage in a travel lock because, God forbid, you put that thing in your bag. Vibrating stuff going on. TSA is going to have a lot of questions for you. And also, meaning it's even waterproof. Uh, The performance package... Yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. It's amazing. The performance package 4.0 also includes the Weed Whacker, the Ultimate Flex, Watch it run through ear and nose hairs like Jalen Carter runs through your favorite quarterback. The Weed Whacker is also waterproof and uses a 9,000 RPM motor powered 360 degree rotary dual blade system. The nose and ear hair trimmer provides proprietary skin safe technology which helps reduce nicks, snags, and tugs in all those sensitive holes. And don't forget at the end of everything, once everything is all cleaned up, you can use the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and their Crop Reviver to help your little bench warmers be on their A game while feeling the sun's heat. They also threw in, like we said, uh, the boxers and the shed travel bag. So, Meanie, guess what, sir? Who was that man? Who is the commissioner now? Definitely not. It's definitely not the other guy. It's Manscaped right now. So go 
to Manscaped right now. Manscaped.com and get 20% off plus free shipping by using the promo code Mind. Meanie, that's right, 20% off plus free shipping with the promo code man, Mind Meanie at manscaped.com. It's time to put the PP back in PPR and get a grip on your pigskin this season with Manscaped. And as always, we thank them for sponsoring the program. Go birds and go balls. Speaking of throwing it into high gear, I, yes, have a, I have a question for you, sir. Yes. Are you ready to ask me? I would love to. It's time to ask me anything. Ask me something. Yeah, who calls? I can't remember what regular air smells like. Don't forget. <laughs> tweet us your questions using the hashtag Ask Meanie, and you may hear them on the program. Meanie, what kind of seltzer you got today? I apologize in advance. I drank my good shit. What do you got? I mean, uh, I'm still rocking with the the polar, there the you uh, black cherry seltzer. So let me uh, crack the bad boy open, Sandman style. I, no, I'm not giving you the finger. This is how I have to hold the can. <laughs> so uh, three, two, one. Oof. I have been patiently waiting to crack the bad boy open. Let's see. How is it? Pinky up. Love it. Well done. As always, it's warm as fuck because I, I forgot to put it in the fucking fridge. <laughs> but uh, excellent as always. Got a lot of and questions this I week. I think I enjoy a nice seltzer. That, I know I talked about this early in the early days of the podcast. But uh, back in the day, I have a friend, Bob. You know, oh, I, say I always get a good friend that's a, an old head. Yeah. And, you know, I told him, I was talking to my friend, Bob, he's in his eighties, you know, he grew up in New York and, you know, he was an air force engineer, all this stuff. And I was talking about like how I, I, I like drinking seltzers more than anything because, you know, it helps, you know, you not one to drink soda. He goes, well, back in the day, if you wanted a seltzer, um, if you want to get a seltzer, you go up the counter says, and you would say, give me two cents plain, which meant give me a, a seltzer water. Mm. Now, if you wanted flavored seltzer, you would go to the counter and say, give me two cents, two cents with color, which meant give me a seltzer water with, you know, uh, whatever flavoring they put in there, like cherry or whatever back in the day. Yeah. Or, or a slice of lemon. <laughs> something fancy but, you know, yeah so uh you know uh you know so if he, back in the day whenever his day was i don't want to age him but uh you know if you wanted a seltzer you say give me two give me two cents plain if you wanted a f- seltzer with flavor give me two cell give me two cents with color interesting that's fascinating and then uh, so you told me <clears throat> told me that i took out a razor blade and cut my forehead <laughs> here's your two cents for your color sir let me see what we got going on here. Got a lot of questions this week, man. This is great shit. I love this. Uh, <laughs> Atta boy. <laughs> Sounded violent. Uh, let's see. <laughs> violence, violence. All right, here we go. Mark and Dryden's got a couple questions for us this week. Dark nice. Sides Twitter asked who or what would they like to see covered next season? Personally, I would like to see Dick Murdoch covered. Who would you two like to see covered? And would Buck Zumhoffy, did I say that right, Zumhoff? Buck Zumhoff. Zumhoff be way too dark of a subject. Ugh. I don't even know Not who that really. is. Not really. Uh, See the Gigi Allen of wrestling? Mm, he, he eventually became a, a pedo. Oh. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I, I don't know if it's, I don't know. I mean. Oh, my God. I don't know if you could do a whole show on Buck Zoom off, but uh, yeah, that was fucked up. But um, who would I like to see covered? Um, there's a lot. There's so many things. There, there's, there's uh, I mean, more things that are better than Bash at the Beach 2000. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, probably have to be. Of course, I'm blanking now. 
Uh, what about uh, what's his name? Um, Japanese wrestling legend who was murdered by the mafia. Oh, Ricky Dozan. Hmm. I you know like uh, you know back in the day they, that that was one of my. Uh, of course, I went on to say there's so many fucking things, and I couldn't think of one that right off the top of my head. So I'm a walking contradiction, folks. But uh, the Ricky Dozan story, I th- always thought was fascinating because he was like this. Re- he, well, he is a wrestling legend. He was like the pioneer of wrestling in Japan. Like, you know, just like how Gorgeous George was the pioneer of wrestling here. Television wrestling. Mm. You know, when, you know, if TVs first came out, one of the first things that was on them was professional wrestling and Gorgeous George, you know. In Japan, it was Ricky Dozan, and uh, yeah, he, he his death was very mysterious. Mm. You know, so kind of like I think I don't know how if they could afford that, but you know, just to go to Japan just for the one story. But uh, it definitely would have been interesting. It would definitely be interesting to hear the the history of that story. Yeah, I'm trying to think who what I'd want to see. Um... I think they've kind of covered everybody that I've thought about. Like, I don't know if there's any others. They did, they did Dino Bravo. They yeah. did. Uh, they did Owen That's Hart. That's the other thing. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think who that who yeah. did they already cover. Yeah, like I'm trying to run back, run it back in my head. Um, I mean, I guess at some point they would probably have to do Scott Hall, which I think is still a little bit too raw for people. I don't know. I mean, and then, and also too, his story is also kind of out there so i don't need know if there's even really a necessity to to do that um no i think i think everything's been pretty much covered new jack was great i mean um yeah. they touched on mass transit then um no see i'd want i'd want to really know like i'd want people to really dive deep into like things that happened like you know like um perry saturn and mike bell or yeah. um the uh, acolytes and, and public enemy. Like I would love to have like, if it was almost like little like 15 minute clips of, you know, like, like those stories and talking to people about what happened and, and getting the backstory on it. Like, I think that would be, I think that would be cool. But yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. Anything else? Yeah. They, yeah. They've done a pretty good job of covering a lot of stuff. Um, I was fascinated by the Gino Hernandez one. I was fascinated by the Adrian Adonis one. Yeah, I would have to really sit down and yeah. uh, think about these. Yeah. You know, which ones? You know, they covered the Brody. Yeah, I mean, Brody was the inspiration for the series. Yeah. I wish they would go back and, like, do director's cuts and, like, you know, maybe, exp- you know, Take once they've already done, expand them to like ninety minutes for all the stuff they couldn't put in the show. Yeah, that would know? be that would be great, man. I would love to see that a ninety minute documentary why on fucking Bruiser Brody. Bruiser, Bruiser Brody, fuck, dude. Yeah, why not? Just uh, put out a box set mm-hmm. with the uh, ext- extended, you know, things that people buy it. Yeah, maybe I don't know. I it's like, but like, and I I guess my mind goes to things like with Bat now now that they've done Bash at the Beach two thousand. Like I think about maybe Katie Vick. Like, could you do yeah. something on that? You know, but I'm saying like that, that feels like the same kind of lane. And it's like, well, I don't know. Um, Machete Von Kill is here and wants to know, hey, hey, Meanie, why, why, why is everyone sleeping on Preston Vance? Is it because he's too good looking? I legit can't figure out why everyone isn't as big of a fan of him as I am. Well, uh, I kind of have a little bit of a bias because I helped train him. Ah, uh, you know, I, I think he should be a, you know, uh, be more talked about than he is. And it's just, you know, uh, admittedly, I haven't been watching either product as much as I probably should. I should watch because, you know, I have friends and people, you know, I know there. But uh, he's immensely talented. And uh, as far as I, I know, like, they love him there at AEW because he does everything right, you know. So, uh, yeah, he should be a bigger star, in my opinion. Uh, and why, I don't know. Because from what I've heard, he's universally liked and respected in AEW. 
So I, I don't know. I wish, I wish he was. I just don't know. And you don't want to reach out and go, Hey man, how come what's going on? Yeah. You know, you know I don't want to put him in the position to, to say anything or he could be happy, you know, with his position. Who knows? I don't know. But, uh, who knows what, you know, is even going on in the company, you know? So I don't, I don't know. Uh, here we go. We got one from Carlo Carlson. Uh, say blue. Do you have any memories of wrestling Mikey Whip- Whipwreck? Say Goob, yes. Do you have any memories of jumping off of anything with Bam Margera? <laughs> <laughs> I think I had one match in ECW with Mikey. It might have been him and Spicoli versus me and Stevie in um, Jim Thorpe. And uh I really don't have it. I don't really have any memories of the match. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, there's so many things I've done and, uh, yeah, I forget I've done. Yeah. Until like I'm reminded and he just said, Hey, uh, did I ever work wrestle Mikey? I was like, yeah, well, I think we did one match together and that was about it. And I know, I know it was in Jim Thorpe, but, other than that, I really don't know what the match was. Mikey's phenomenal. Yeah. Talk about one of those um, stories, you know, going from being a kid who was just on ring crew, helped some of the ring, setting up the ring to having a career and being one of the, uh, one of the most respected guys in wrestling. And he, he's going on to train guys like Matt Cardona and Brian Myers and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You know, speak volumes to you know who he is as a wrestler and as a trainer and as a person yeah i talked to him recently and then you know we we talk back and forth here and there but as far as uh, working with him i only worked with him once i i, I re- honestly don't even really remember much of it i, I think he threw a drop kick at me <laughs> once and that's about it I, that's all i remember <laughs> um i never jumped off anything with bam margera um I'm trying to think of any stories that I could tell that would be appropriate here. Um, most of the time when I was with Bam, it was just a lot of partying. It was a lot of drinking that happened. Like Bam wasn't really in a good place at that point. Like it start things had started to kind of go off the rails. Um, I remember being there for a skit that became like kind of notorious for Brandon Novak in Jackass 3D. And I think it's in Jackass 3.5. It's a skit called Doo-Doo Falls. And what happens is they put Novak on a toilet on a skateboard, and he's reading a paper. And Bam had this, like, super high, like, at his house. He used to have this really cool outdoor skate park and uh, had this really big drop that would, like, it was really fucking high that would drop in. I can't remember how tall it was. Um, and he put him at the top of this thing and he, he pushed Novak off the top and Novak just like fully fucking ate shit as he hit the ground, like just fucking slammed and broke his ribs and broke his arm. I did something with his arm. I think I don't remember. He broke up, busted up a bunch of shit, but all of us were like, Oh God, Novak's dead. You know, like this is it. He's finally fucking dead. And, um, he ended up going to the hospital, uh, to get checked out. He was fighting it. He didn't want to go to the hospital. And because he had an active warrant for his arrest and, like, kind of started the trajectory of a bunch of shit that happened in his life where he ended up in jail for, like, a year and a half. So um, I was there for that. I don't remember. I mean, I remember eating shit a couple of times at the skate park, getting punched in the balls and kicked in the balls a couple of times, but nothing like... It was, a again, it was a lawless time in my life. And um, I'm sure I'll have some stories to share about it sometime. But, no, I, 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 I think maybe the indoor skate park, I think I was trying to, like come you know come in on the uh, you know on the drop and i think he pushed me off and that was about it like but it wasn't nearly as crazy as it sounds so i uh, appreciate the question uh rj krasinski what's up dude what up rj what's going on man uh meanie who what i should say not who what is your early super bowl picks oh of course i'm gonna pick the eagles yeah. uh go birds first and foremost go birds uh, I'm sure he was, he's wanting me to pick the bills. Uh, he did say go bills. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. I ain't picking the Eagles because to me, the fucking AFC is fucking loaded. 
Yeah. Like their their fucking roster is fucking loaded. I mean, look at all the fucking quarterbacks they got, you know, Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers, Joe Burrow, you know, uh, Josh Allen. Holy shit, you know? Yeah. NFC has, you know, Jalen Hurts. And then everybody else fighting for second place, in my opinion. Uh, people keep t- trying to say, you know, oh, Eagles got the Super Bowl hangover. But to me, the fucking, you know, not to be you know goofy, but like the uh, term Super Bowl hangover is usually resigned for the, the winner. Yeah. You know, because the winners are hungover from going to the banquets and the award ceremonies mm-hmm. and this, that, and the other thing. Like World Series hangover. The the OA Phils had the World Series hangover because, you know, Cole Hamels was, you know, MVP and he was doing the autograph saying going to autograph shows and banquets and all that stuff. But uh from all the, you know reports coming out of campus, you know, this Eagles roster looks might looks a little bit better than the uh the roster last year that actually wound up going to the Super Bowl. You know, the Kobe Dean's, you know, coming up. Christian Ellis is looking good. Dude, I'm a big fan of Sidney Brown out of Illinois who just, like, I think he's going to put a lot of fear in people because he, he, he fucking loves to fucking hit people. Like, old school hit fucking people. And, uh, yeah, I think this, 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 this squad's going to be pretty good. So I'm going to say, you know, Eagles for the NFC. Yep. But man, that AFC is so fucking loaded with great quarterbacks and teams and stuff like that. So it's just flip a coin. I would, I would love to see, I would love to see Eagles bills just for the two fucking fan bases. I don't think the planet could handle <laughs> Eagles fans and bills fans. Nah. Tailgating. You know, I, I went to an Eagles Bills game up in, in Buffalo, and if the weather had been a little bit better, it, it would have been the tailgate would have been a little bit more dangerous. I, <laughs> I feel uh, I was a fucking shit weather day, mm. but uh, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll go for it. I, I know he's he's egging me on. Yeah, he's got yeah, he's, yeah. Eagles and Bills, Eagles Bills. Well, that's Just for the fucking fan, for the fan bases alone. That'll be my choice as well. Um, I I I have a good feeling about the Eagles this year. Um, I just I know it's hometown pride, but I just feel like everything is going to come together for them. So uh, I would. Uh, well, I was watching. Uh, I watched the Eagles uh, network on uh, YouTube, and they had uh, Mike Quick on, um, and they were saying, you know, uh, you know, they asked him. He's like. You know, do you think this last Eagles roster was the greatest roster assembled in Eagles history? He goes, actually, I think it's this year's roster. And that's Mike Quick. And uh, Mike Quick is usually brutally honest. For those who don't know, Mike Quick was former Eagles wide receiver, legend, uh, 80s, early 90s. Now he's the voice of Eagles radio with Merrill Reese. I'm Merrill Reese. Um. He said he thinks this roster is the best Eagles roster assembled. Mm. So we'll see, man. We'll yep. see. Um, so thank you all for your questions here. Up, oh, Mrs. Goober's here with a run-in. Say hi, everyone. You'll see this on Patreon.com. <laughs> slash my other mini. She's trying not to be here. <laughs> she brought me a seltzer because I'm uh, a little parched right now. But I want to say thank you to everybody sending your questions in. Uh, actually, you know what? I'll crack it at the end here. Hold on. One, two, three. There she is. Thank you, Mrs. Goober. Thank you. <laughs> Atta boy. Oh, I got to get one in here now. Come on. Yeah. Get a nice uh, grapefruity kiss. No, oh, that wasn't good. Well, I'll try uh, to get one before the end of the... Yeah, I'll try to get one before the end here, but... You fucking pussy. Yo, fuck up, fuck. Listen to you with that shitty ass butt. What the fuck are you doing? Be careful. My window's open. <laughs> My so. dude, man. I'm cussing up the store with all the kids playing outside. <laughs> They're hearing like one end of a conversation <laughs> where I'm calling somebody a pussy. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. 
Thank you all for sending in your questions for Ask Meaning. We love asking them every week. I'm sorry we didn't get to all of them this week, but we will definitely catch up to most of them next week. Meanie, I want to thank you, as always, for doing the show. We're going to start the campaign, Meanie, for the Hall of Fame at WrestleMania 40. Don't forget to hashtag it and tweet it at everyone in WWE's network so they can get their attention for the blue guy. But also, I want to know, sir, while we're starting that up and ramping that process up, where can everybody keep in contact and stay with you on social media? If you would like to follow the Blue Meanie on all forms, social media, you know, by the way, I'm still calling Twitter, Twitter. I don't give a fuck. Uh, call me a rebel. Call me what you will. Uh, you can follow the Blue Meanie on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and now Threads. At Blue Meanie BWO. Uh, if you would like to support the Blue Meanie, go to ProWrestlingTees.com slash Blue Meanie. If you would like to support Mind of the Meanie, go to ProWrestlingTees.com slash Mind of the Meanie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand, go to CollarNelbowBrand.com, use coupon code Meanie, or use coupon code Mind. Support Mind of the Meanie. Or the Blue Mania save 10% on your order. MadcapBeerCare.com. Uh, let your beard look good and feel good, smell good. Go get the uh, Blue Spruce Beard Oil and Bomb. Shout out to Josh Thornton, who's doing an amazing job over there at MadcapBeerCare.com, taking care of the cats. The Ultra Pro Wrestling video game coming to all major consoles in 2024. Ultra Pro Wrestling contains not only original characters created by the great Hal Haney, but many real-world wrestlers, including myself and many others, who I'm trying not to spoil. Uh, go to ultraprowrestling.com or follow them on Twitter at UPW Video Game. Again, that's UPWWrestling.com or on Twitter at UPW Video Game. Uh, the Figure Collections Bone Crushing Wrestling Series Variants 1 of the Blue Meanie are available now. All Series 1s, uh, all Series 1s, so Series 1s, all Series 1s can be ordered now at shop.figurecollections.com. Get yourself a Blue Meanie or a BWO Meanie at shop.figurecollections.com. Do you have the Blue Meanie on your podcast? Go to podstars.net. That's P O D S T R Z dot net. Go register your podcast and then uh, book a session with the Blue Guy. Shout out to Jim Nelson over at glaciersofice.com. Jim made a three of three only handmade BWO custom BWO Air Jordan 1 sneaker for Stevie Nova and myself. Each pair takes Jim a about 50 hours per pair. So if you would like to see all his fantastic work, photos, and videos, follow him on so all forms of social media at GOI Kicks. Follow Jim on social media at GOI Kicks. Cameo.com slash Blue Meanie BWO for birthdays, holidays, and well wishes. Uh, I just did a video last week where somebody asked me a pretty cool question. Uh, you know, send in your uh, request now. I could do a, a well wish or, you know, even there's an option to uh, promote your product. You know, there's a business part of it too as well. So go to cameo.com slash blue mini BWO. But more importantly, Mr. Bernard, where can we find you, sir? Well, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. You can find me on all forms of social media, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, threads, and now also on Blue Sky. I finally got an invite to Blue Sky, which I'm waiting to get an invite to send to the blue guy who belongs on the blue sky. You can find me at this is goober. Yes, it's my handle. No, I'm not changing it. It's a brand pal. So you follow me there and keep up with everything going on. You can also listen to my other show foundation radio uh, at foundationradio.net. Or if you're on Apple podcasts, you can find both of those shows at the premier podcast network, which we're happily a part of with a lot of other great material there. So check my shows out brothers gather.com. Uh, you can go and pick up the very first licensed official Adam Bernard Wrestle Buddy. Uh, there is only 25 in existence, and there are only a few left. So go pick one up now. And you can also, I'll have you know, go pick up a Blue Meanie Wrestle Buddy uh, at the same place. And even better, 
you can pick up a two-pack, two-pack, that's right, meaning two-pack, of the two of us together there at brothersgatter.com. Go to thefeinbergmethod.com and use promo code GOOBER and save up to 20% on your entire purchase. My trainer, Brad Feinberg, is ready to assist you with not just your physical well-being, but also your mental well-being. So go over there and tell them Goober sent you the Feinberg Method. Com. Go and check out my friends at the 10th Ward Barbershop in downtown Lawrenceville on the outskirts of Pittsburgh. Tell, uh, go and see Kane or Jordan and the rest of the team over there. You can schedule your appointment today at 10thwardbarbershop.com. Pro Wrestling Tees slash uh, dot com slash foundation radio. Pro Wrestling Tees dot com slash mind of the meaning. Keep the lights on at Casa de Mini and the Barnard Home for Wayward and Troubled Youth. We want to thank the Pod Squad for being here again. You can sign up today at patreon.com slash mind of the meanie and be a part of our Pod Squad tier starting at just $10 a month. We want to thank Manscaped for sponsoring the program, Meanie. Always a pleasure to see you, my good friend, for the Blue Meanie. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. For the Blue Meanie, I am Adam Bernard. Join us again each and every week as we take a trip through the mind of the meanie. Peace. This episode of Mind of the Meanie is hosted and executively produced by the Blue Meanie and Adam Barnard. It was mixed and engineered by Carl Pinnell. Additional narration is provided by the executive voice, Sam Kreps. Our intro music was performed by the Swamp Candles. Our outro music was performed by Chikara. Additional musical accompaniment is produced by Enrichment. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Mind of the Meanie and become our patron on Patreon by going to patreon.com slash Mind of the Meanie. Find our entire show archive at mindofthemeanie.com. This has been a Butts Carlton Media Production, Butts Carlton Proprietor. Blue, 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 blue,